Marcus Conti coming to you live from Tulsi Gabbard's Tulsi Gabbard gathering here in New York City. We're out in front of uh, Project Farm. It's a little convention center here. Project Farm here on 13th Street. It's kind of like a little bit of the village here. So Tulsi Gabbard is going to speak today between 11 and 1. And uh, that's her crowd. It's about 10.30, about a half hour before time. Got a nice half a block crowd. People eager to get in. So, uh, let's just start off with a sign over here. A little Tulsi sign. A little Tulsi Gabbard sign. There we go. Hey, how you doing, man? How's it going? All right, Marcus Conti reporting. So, uh, 10, uh, 11 o'clock, Tulsi will be here? I hope so. Is she, are you a uh, organizer or are you just a fan? I volunteered to help set up, but they got so many people volunteered, they said, just stand out here and hold a sign. <laughs> you got it, man. So Tulsi's not in the house yet, right? Uh, not, the, not that I, I don't think so. What's your favorite Tulsi Gabbard uh, talking point? What do, you, what do you want her to do as president? Uh, end regime change wars. Stop the, uh, the industri military industrial complex. You got it. She's big on that, right? That's her main thing. She's the main one talking about it. Because you know? if you stop that, what else happens? You can she says, you know, she's for the green, you know, she's for, you know, stopping the fossil fuel and, and uh, you know, the, the health, you know, the, all the, the social insurances, the health care for all. She's for the, she has a completely progressive program. But she says, none of this is going to happen if you don't stop these regime change wars, if you do not bring the... Bring those, bring those yeah. soldiers home. Hey, what about what about the uh, what about the uh, cheating that's going on? Democratic cheating. How do oh, we? Oh man! Because she's only she's only polling at about one percent, well, and know, that doesn't seem right. No, that's I fake the, fake the, poll. The, the, the leadership of the Democratic Party, I believe, their strategy: crowd the field, make sure Sanders doesn't win. That's the main thing. Make sure, in particular, make sure stop San Sanders. Stop Sanders. Make sure he doesn't get the black vote in the South, South Carolina, in particular. You know, fuzz all that up, right? And then when they get to the convention, even if Sanders or Biden or any of the leaders don't have the, the delegates in place to win on the first ballot, in the second ballot, they unleash their super delegates and they hand it over to Biden. And the Democratic Party follows in the wake of Hillary Clinton and Trump is going to get reelected again. Right. Now, what happens if they say the Democrats will turn around and say, oh, no, no, we're going to go along with the, uh, with the uh, pledged delegates. But the people voted for, people voted for Bernie, but... But but the super delegates step in now. That's that's a that's an outside shot, right? The Democrats have always said, "Oh no, we go along with the pledged delegates." No, they changed the big reform. They they can't be trusted. Sixteen, the big reform that everybody said, "Oh, we've made yeah, great yeah, changes," right, right. was that the super delegates wouldn't vote on the first ballot. That right. was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're going to vote on the second ballot. Now you'd say, "Well, that's pretty." You know, Biden doesn't win on the first. So ballot. so could we call that election rigging? It's. You know, in effect, you know, that's how the system works. What else could it be called? <laughs> it's it's legal rigging. You know, it's like it's like you have, uh, you know, you, 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 you're free. You, ab you, you abolish slavery, but then you reinstitute it by another name, you know, Jim right. Crow or something. It's right. the same kind of thing. Right. You abolish this first ballot superdelegate right. thing, but you've reinstituted the same thing on another thing. My only hope is that that Bernie doesn't just fall in line. I right. really hope he doesn't fall in line. He did the last I, time, didn't he? He did the last time. I hope that, that uh, Tulsi Gabbard doesn't fall in line. I'm not going to fall in line, and I think a lot of other people aren't going to fall in line. And Biden is going to go down. He's not going to win the election against Trump. As no much way. as I can't stand Trump, he's not the candidate. Do you, think, do the, uh, do you think 12 uh, GRU, uh, 12 GRU Russian military agents hacked the Democratic Convention or and handed it over to WikiLeaks, or was that Hillary and the Dirty Democrats? Well, I, I, I think that the whole Russia thing has been totally hyped by the Democratic Party leadership to justify the, de the defeat of Hillary Clinton and to really to divert attention away from why she lost. And Do you think they the hacked the election? Program. Do you think they hacked the uh, Democratic... The Russians? Yeah. No. It's ridiculous, right? It, I, I think it's, you know, when you, you have to look at evidence. There's, you know, the evidence is what? Facebook posts... You know, it's it, it, it's it's well, Mo Mueller went further and said that they had evidence that uh, there was 12 Russian actual indictments. Yeah, they went as far as indictments. You can indict the old saying, you can indict a ham sandwich. Amen. You know, come, come and he, he, indicting them, knowing full, full well that 
they're never going to be have to come and testify. And I think I'm not positive about this, but I think that one person actually showed up. Right. And the, the judge adjourned because they were totally unprepared. Mueller wasn't ready. They were totally unprepared that actually they would have to produce any evidence for this thing. You know. Good deal. Hey, really good talking to you, man. What's your name? Sean Ahern. Sean Ahern. Thank you, man. Wow, we're in New York, man. I got a smart audience. See if anybody else wants to talk to me. Hey, you guys are first in line. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Marcus Conti reporting. So, Tulsi Gabbard, here she is. You, you guys excited? Uh, we are excited? Very excited. You think she can win? I sure hope so. I really think she started a gr She is continuing a really great movement that was started by Bernie, and she's going to continue that legacy regardless of what happens. But I firmly believe that she's the best candidate running right now. Yeah, I don't think the establishment is going to let her win, but she's definitely a step towards the revolution, which is what's required. So, so you're afraid of the establishment cheating again? Afraid of it? <laughs> They're going to do what they want to do. They're the ones in charge. Tulsi Gabbard is currently polling at uh, 1%. How ridiculous, right? It's probably more like 10, 15%. Yes, but if you believe that uh, Biden is ahead, that's fake another news. fake news. Right. They, they got Biden at like 40%, yeah, right. and, and he can't fill up a uh, gymnasium, and Bernie's filling up stadiums. How, how do you So they're cheating, right? That's right. What's your biggest Tulsi Gabbard point? Anti-war. Regime change war. American imperialism. Get money, get money out of politics? Money out of politics, sure. Clean up the election system a little right. bit? Good deal, man. Enjoy, enjoy the show. Thank you. My name is on the hat. <laughs> hey guys, smart people. They know what they want. Hey, can I ask somebody about uh, Tulsi? How you doing? Man? Sure. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up, boss? Mark, hey, Mark, Mark Scott, you're co reporting. So uh, here we are, Tulsi Gabbard. First time you've seen her? Yes, actually. This is my first time uh, seeing uh, Tulsi uh, in person. This is like, you know, I'm pretty excited that the uh, whole campaign cycle is in basically in full swing now. So yeah, I'm looking forward to see how it goes. You have a better radio voice than I do, so I got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Although you have much nicer hair than I do, so <laughs> I can. I, we could do a trade. You know, you could speak, and I'll give you some hair. Mm -hmm. So, so what's your biggest? Uh, what's your biggest point with Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard? I know it's military and and such. What? What? what why? Why do you think that um, she should be? You know, president. Well, I think that what makes Tulsi uh, very, very, not just a, a good choice for president, but also valuable to our uh, dialectic as a whole going into 2020 is that uh, she is very much um, anti-interventionalism and she comes from a background in which she has like quite a good uh, place to go off from that having served in the military so she has first-hand experience and I think that that is very, very important right now because uh, somehow, mysteriously, uh, the anti-war left has sort of been like on the back burner in favor of like corporate Democrats who are very much uh, in line with the military industrial complex. Uh, meanwhile, we have an actual veteran who knows, like I said, firsthand of why it is that we oughtn't be engaging in these foreign conflicts and such. And I think that is probably one of the biggest, biggest contributions that she's making to the uh, dialogue so far, as well as why I think she would be a very fantastic candidate for president. If she, let me ask you a question, if, uh, if, she, if, she, fa if she falls short coming up for president, 38 years old, it's possible, right? And uh, Bernie Sanders taps her for VP, you'd be happy with that? Yeah, I'd be totally down for it. Again, it's, it's, it's about being there to, like, even if you cannot achieve the position being in a being in a place where you can help spread these she's, ideas. She's about. already done that quite quite yeah. quite a bit because if you're uh, paying attention, Bernie Sanders just went left. Yeah. She just pushed Bernie Sanders left on war. Wh now he's saying, "Oh, war at is at the change.org. War is the number one. Uh, you know, the get, get, stop the insurgency. War is number one issue. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, I and he I, and he and Tulsi Gabbard said it a long time before he did. Certainly. Well, I think that because Bernie is like, uh, uh, as far as progressives are concerned, he's like the number one public figure. I think it is a little bit more difficult for him to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Beca because uh, Tulsi is coming from a bit more of an outsider position, it's uh, both uh, 
plus for her as a person and um, an advantage for her to be more uh, consistent. Um, as far as uh, change.org or as far as uh, polls are concerned, I think that um, from my pers in my personal opinion, you know, anti-interventionalism is a good stance no matter who it's coming from. Yeah, You got it, man. Hey, thanks for, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate it. Good no talking. Problem. How you doing, man? Good talk. Hey. hey, how are you, man? Marcus Conti reporting. So uh, what do you think, man? Tulsi Gabbard? 2020? I'm here for a woman? Yeah. First woman president? Uh, it's about time. Yeah, no, I uh, love her policies, and I'm here to learn a little bit more about her domestic policies. I mean, I, her foreign policy is well uh, communicated, and, and so uh, really big supporter on that, and, and want to hear more about what her what her domestic uh, policies would be. She brings a nice tranquility to the race as well, where everybody's you know, Trump is yelling and screaming, insulting everybody. He's calling uh, his new name for Nancy Pelosi is, uh, what is it, uh, Nervous Nancy, you know? It's just, an, it's just a, um, would you agree that it's, it's refreshing when you watch her? She's very direct, very, very sure that if you stop these insurgency wars, these regime change wars, you know, that's that's good leadership and the rest falls in line. That's kind of where she's coming from. Yeah, and as she points out many times, nothing's good come from any of them. If you look at every country that we have intervened in and you ask, is that country better off today than it was the day before we intervened? The answer is, uh, you know, and twenty not. trillion dollars later. Exactly. You know, the amount of, of blood and treasure that our country has has, you know, devoted to Syria, you Yemen. Know, Outside Iraq. Iraq. Yeah, it's not now. Now Iran. Iran. Not almost. Almost, almost Venezuela. Exactly. And and you have to ask why. You know why? Why are we doing this? You know and money. Well, money and, and, and there are there are international interests involved that that aren't Americans. You know that are, that aren't American interests. You know and so so when she calls that out and she goes on shows like The View or like Tucker Carlson or, or the other shows, she's been very upfront and 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 you can see the backlash that she's gotten from great videos too right? from mainstream media. Yeah, no, it's 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 important. So I'm here. To, you know, like I said, I'm I'm really on board with her foreign policy and want to hear more about what her domestic takes are because we've got a lot of domestic problems as well. Thank you very much. Good talking, man. Need to mention it's getting hot out. Hey guys, how you doing, man? Tulsi Gabbard, 2020. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. She's your winner. I hope so because I don't want to vote for any of the others. <laughs> right, right. You got like uh, you know, so it's like 19 shit sandwiches and uh, and Tulsi Gabbard. Right? <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard, basically. That's that's about it. Well, Bernie, I like. Bernie. Of course, Bernie. You'll yeah. sprinkle in a little Elizabeth Warren in there, right? No, nah, nah, I wouldn't vote for Elizabeth Warren if you paid me. Why not? Because um, she's uh, kind of the one that they scripted to be Bernie this year. It was supposed to be Biden versus Warren, so they could make, make they could pretend that they were throwing us a bone. But I don't believe her for a second. I think she's very insincere. I think she's just a. Do you believe the polls right now that put uh, no. Joe Biden at forty yeah, percent and Bernie also, at ten? Right, and I also believe that Hillary Clinton has a ninety-seven percent chance to win against Trump. Yeah, you know, they, they actually had her. They actually had her at one hundred percent. Remember? <laughs> there you go. I mean, no, I don't believe the polls, especially not this early, because nobody even knows what's going on yet. I mean, the I, I did. I did a poll down in Washington Heights, uh, Washington uh, Square Park, okay. about a couple of blocks away, and I yeah. had Bernie Sanders, just just asking people, you know, right. on paper, do a paper ballot. I had, they had Bernie Sanders at thirty-four yeah. percent. Joe Biden didn't even make ten percent. There you go. My roommate voted for Hillary last time, and she says she doesn't know anybody that wants Biden. She does not know one person that her job, her friends, nobody. Everybody's talking about either uh, Tulsi, Bernie, uh, Yang gets a lot of mention, but but nobody's into Biden. I think it's totally full of crap. I think they're making that crap. He's the corporatist pick. They're gonna yeah, yeah. gonna manufacture some consent right. with the polls. Look, look, look. He's ahead, yeah. and then cheat to try to cheat him through the finish line, right? Exactly. You think exactly. it's gonna Which work? What they, no. Well, I hope not, but I don't know. I mean, you really don't know. There's silence. Are One you blue no matter who? No. See, I, I come, I'm a YouTuber, and a lot of people are being censored and kicked off now, including like Ford Fisher, the cameraman. I, I'm, 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 on, I'm on thin ice myself. Yeah, exactly. Me too. And I just do an entertainment show. I don't even do politics. Right. So, you know, I'm kind of scared about that stuff, and I think they're trying to... Plug so, your show, man. What's your show? Oh, uh, no, nah, I don't want to plug it. It's just okay. uh, I, I just do like entertainment stuff, scary stories and stuff, but it's, it's not worth plugging here. But um, the thing is, um, 
I think they're trying to silence a lot of people so that the mainstream has the entire hold on the narrative for the public. So I find that really frightening because they claim they're going after guys like Crowder, but he's just like the cover while they go after Ford Fisher and you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully not you. I mean, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I'm I'm like in the middle, so. But yeah, the the censorship thing is is off the cuff. I mean, yeah. it really, it, it's YouTube is now putting out saying that uh, that uh, they're going to ban you know certain speech. You can't even talk about like if you wanted to say like yeah. like the, the Earth is ra- uh, flat. Yeah. Well, how does that jeopardize your your safety and my safety? I think well, by I a have, bunch of idiots talking about a flat. Uh, I have my own conspiracies Earth. about that conspiracy theory. I think that was made up to throw a lot of people out. You know, to to make you be branded as a radical, because I don't think. Well, saying the New Zealand the Z- New Zealand video looked a little fake. Well, I didn't even look at it because I don't want to see that kind of stuff. You can't say you can't even say it though. Right. Yeah. You can't even speculate. You can't use the term. No more well, speculation on YouTube. You can't say. Um, I don't know if I should even say it if you're going to put this on YouTube, but you can bleep it out. But you can't even say false flag because it's supposed to be an automatic conspiracy theory. But the Vietnam War was started started with a false flag. You could say it. I've, I haven't had a problem with, with that. Okay. It's more about creating events, suggesting that events didn't happen. Mm. False flag not necessarily didn't happen. Okay. It's just that it, it's, it's, um, it, was, it was created as a distraction, you know. That's right. really what a false flag is. Yeah, I think they sold the censorship to us saying that they were just going to be banning Alex Jones and right-wingers, but yeah. it was really to silence anybody who's not basically for Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren is what it looks like to me. Yeah. yeah. So. Hey, good talking to you, man. Thank you. you. Too. Thank What's you, man. Your show? Marcus Conti. I'll give you a little. Okay. A little uh, it's getting hot out, too. Yeah. My name is Thanks. in the hat. Well, I'll put this up. Oh. This will be up probably tonight. Cool. Thanks a lot. I welcome you. Subscribe. Wow, smart people in New York. Want to talk about Tulsi Gabbard? I don't have a woman yet. Do you want, do you want to be my first woman? Uh, okay. So Tulsi, so Tulsi Gabbard, here we are. She's a uh, first, maybe the first woman president in America. Uh huh. Yeah. That's there's no, there's no. You can say whatever you want here. It's just YouTube. Um, so, what's your favorite Tulsi Gabbard? You know, uh, policy. Um, I like that she is a non-interventionist. She doesn't want to go to war, and she understands that there's a human price to war, which our government representatives don't seem to understand. They use uh, men and women as pawns in their games for oil and stuff like that. So I like that she's not into that. Well, Trump said he was going to drain the swamp, and then he put the new swamp in. Pompeo, Elliot Abrams, John Bolton. The worst kind of war characters. Uh, so, uh, who, so so, how does, so Tulsi Gabbard, she ends the insurgency wars, regime change. What else do you like about her? Um, I like that she's focused on getting people and taking care of here at home. Um, I think Trump says a lot of stuff to get elected, and he did. That's what he achieved. And I think she actually cares about people and policy and making sure that we're getting ahead as a society and not just focusing on the rich people getting ahead. So. In 2016, when the uh, Democratic com- uh, Committee was cheating Bernie Sanders, yeah. I she, for that. <laughs> yeah, she quit and uh, she walked away. And what, what I guess my question is, do you think it's different this time? Do you think that the Democrats are not going to cheat they're already rigging the polls for joe biden yeah i mean they're manufacturing consent to get joe biden ahead but at the end of the day the more progressive voices we have on the stage is what's going to help us push the conversation forward so it's not just bernie this time tulsi's in there we have a couple of people who are going to push the conversation forward and not let the dnc dominate the field so thank you very much good talking to you man thank you want to go on the record yeah i'm good good. all right cool Ooh, it's hot. You should have had the line in the shade. It's all smart people, man. Mark Scotty reporting here at the... Where am I? Tulsi Gabbard is going to speak at 11 o'clock. Maybe another, I don't know, a couple of minutes. But really the story is always online, right? The story is really the people. Right? The story is the people. Right? This crowd, I don't know, you look at the crowd, it's mostly a lot of intellectuals, a lot of... Um, you don't see a lot of young people. A lot of smart people. They're very smart. Right? They know all the facts. You can't stump them. They don't say anything stupid. <laughs> That's my feel so far. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool. Hey, I got you guys on the, on, on the record. Hi, Marcus Conti reporting on uh, Tulsi Gabbard here. She's going to speak in about an hour. Are you excited? I'm so excited. You see all, you saw all the videos, anti-war videos? Yeah, I love it. I love it. You definitely need an anti-war candidate now. She's on the move, right? Did you? Uh, what's your What's your favorite What's your favorite point with Tulsi? Why uh, 
why Tulsi and not like a Bernie or a, or a vote for Trump? She seems incredibly intelligent, and she's really articulate and is able to communicate really complex subjects in a really straightforward way. Yeah, but most most of America is pretty stupid and and <laughs> and simple and dumb, and they they respond to you know calling Nancy Pelosi nervous Nancy and you know and and crooked Hillary, right? I agree with you. I, I agree with you. And just in the couple of minutes I've been on this line, it's all very smart, intelligent people, right? But uh, is that uh, how does that get her? How does how does that win the elections? I guess what I'm looking for. I'm not sure, and I'm not sure whether the Democrats are going to be able to win this year or in 2020, unfortunately. But you know what I do know is I really like her. I love her policies. I think she's an amazing woman. She's super inspiring, and and I don't believe that people across the country are necessarily stupid. I think people are able to think, and hopefully, you know, they'll make they'll make the right call. But, you know, what we need is someone who's who's a little bit more radical and willing to talk about, you know, hard issues like the war and, and things that really matter to people, you know, to the everyday people. And that's what Tulsi is doing. And that's why I support her. Right. She's, she's coming out on all the good points. What about Julian Assange? You following that case? Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not really following that too much. So, OK. Thank you very much. Good talking. You want to talk? You wanna? Come on. I just wanted to I just wanted to make an extra point. Yes, She's please. the only one <clears throat> being able to reach the other side. You saw her like going to Fox News and the Fox News people being able to connect with her and agree with her in many, many of these points. And also to being able to leave that window for liberalism a little bit yeah. um, just because she was going to stop wars. And they are, it seems like they are in favor of that and because she's a uh, She's been part of the army. It's, ha it's, ha it's half the it's half the U it's a half the half the U.S. budget goes to war. They don't want to they don't want to stop that. They don't want to stop that. <laughs> stop that. No. Tulsi Gabbard represents a stopping. And, and to me, something very very important too is that I'm from Argentina. We suffer with uh, GMO and Monsanto, and she's totally against that. So go Tulsi. Are you a veg vegetarian? I got my vegan shirt on. <laughs> I'm trying a pescatarian, but I'm only wild fish and sometimes. Good talking, man. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> Good talks. I gotta wipe my face. You can look at the crowd while I do that. Working up a sweat. My glasses are sliding off my face. So, again, very uh, very articulate, very very interesting crowd. Not a lot of kids. A little worried about that. Got a lot of intellectuals. But then again, we're in Manhattan, right? And it wasn't very well. I, I accidentally fell on this. Hey, hey, hey. hey, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. About Tulsi Gabbard? So, yeah. uh, are you guys excited? Are you uh, first time first time seeing Tulsi live? Yeah, yeah, it's my first time. What's your favorite uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, policy? Uh, just her non-intervention. She wants to end wars. That's uh, what's most important to me. So, She, uh, you know, Trump just vetoed the... Uh, Congress g gave you know Trump the, the power to stop the Yemen war. Trump vetoes it. Tulsi Gabbard was one of the few. I mean, Bernie came out about it too. But yeah. but uh, yeah, the intervention war. What else about Tulsi? Why uh, first woman president? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what's important to me is policy, and um, yeah. you know, it'd be nice to have a woman in there. If a woman has a good policy. That's She's polling at one percent. Do you believe that? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of the polls, really, honestly. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. How about you, sir, man? You got a cool shirt. Can I see your shirt? Ah, uh, Tulsi 2020. Yeah. So, uh... Why do so I like her? Yeah. I mean, I'm an anti-interventionist as well. I like her record on gay rights. Uh, I think that she is somebody who is very calm in the face of criticism, and uh, I think that she's very well-reasoned. I liked her discussion with Joe Rogan. I thought she somebody who comes across as very authentic. Uh, I like her policies. Um, I do have questions for her about drone warfare and when she thinks it's appropriate, because I know that she's anti-interventionist, but I don't know if that means that she is uh, anti-putting troops on the ground or if that means that she's anti-war. So I do have questions, but I'm, I'm inspired and uh, excited about getting to hear her speak and learn more. Are, about you, are you comfortable with everything she said domestically about, you know, Single-payer health care and uh, get money out of politics. 
Well, yeah, but I'm a socialist, so yeah, I'm really into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I like her, and I like Bernie, and there are things about Elizabeth Warren. Those are the three that I like. But of the three, Tulsi is the one I'm the most excited about. Would you Would you settle for a uh, Bernie Tulsi ticket? I wouldn't settle for that. I'd be excited by that. I mean, she's young. Tulsi has a long, a long career ahead of her, so if she doesn't get the nomination, which I frankly don't think that she will this time, but I think that she's going to make a big dent, and I think her presence in the debates will be a really important moment for America. 2024, if Bernie, Bernie gets elected... Well, if Bernie makes it to Bernie, if, Bernie, if Bernie makes it to 2024, bless, then you got you yeah. got a good second. You got Tulsi Gabbard right in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like both of them. I good strategy. I don't think it's an either or. I think having both of their voices, having Mike Gravel in the debates would also be really good. Having these progressives that will push the conversation further left and away from sort she's of. She's already Tulsi Gabbard has already done that. She's been speaking about. Uh, you know, it, it stopping the insurgency wars, and she pushed Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was over there at move dot, moveon.org, yeah. and now all of a sudden his, his number one issue is uh, insurgency wars, stop the wars, and uh, so Bernie's, it's working. But, but, but Bernie's also been anti-war his entire career. You can go back to the 80s and find videos. But he put it up front for the campaign, well, sure. yeah, yeah, and I that's mean, Tulsi Gabbard's doing, in my view. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know about that. I honestly don't know about that. But it's important to have both their voices, I think. And, uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm really excited to hear her speak. All right. Enjoy the show, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. She may be a member for all I know. Although she's still in the active reserves. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
people, even even Elizabeth Warren, stick her somewhere, give her a cabinet position, and make it do something for a change. Yeah, I'm looking at 16 years of Bernie and Tulsi somehow uh, extending out the presidency. Stop the insurgency wars. Yeah, and have Nina Turner's vice president thrown in there someplace. She's good. Tina's She's a spokesperson. A spokesperson. No doubt, man. No doubt. Yeah. She's going to be around for a while. Hey, yeah. thanks a lot, man. Okay. Appreciate it. Hey, can I get a sticker? Yes, sir. Put it right there. Lay it on. Where you want? Yeah, that's cool. Get my hair out of there. All right, I got a Tulsi Gabbard sticker. Anyhow, I'm official. It's official. Yeah. Tulsi 2020. Hi, Marcus Conti reporting. How are you guys doing? You, you, you look, you look like you're afraid of me. I'm just a little hot because it's, I'm just standing out in the sun. Tulsi Gabbard, she's gonna win. What do you think? I hope so. You excited to see her first time? I am. Yeah. She's coming from Hawaii. She made the trip, long flight. Yes. Yeah. New York crowds, tough crowd, man. Tough crowd. People are smart here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all it's all intellectuals online. No 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 people uh, like it's I I don't want to insult people, but it's all like smart people. Is there enough smart people in America to uh, vote for Tulsi Gabbard? What do you think? He's gonna answer that question. Oh. I'm not smart. She's enough. polling at one percent. Do you think it's do you think it's real? Do you think one percent or are they rigging it? I mean, it's probably rigged a little bit, but it's possible. Good shot. talking to you, man. Good talking to you. Thanks for being short on words. <laughs> Appreciate it. Ooh, how many? Whoa, over half an hour. This is exciting. Hi. I'm a little disappointed in the, the uh, age. I would put the age... The age of this crowd probably... You know, there's over 30, definitely. But mostly I would put the mean age of maybe even 50. It's pretty interesting. Kids are screaming for Bernie, but Tulsi's, Tulsi's definitely there, man. Hey, man. He's on the phone. Hi, Tulsi Gabbard. Um, doing a little, trying to, take a, trying to take a little temperature of the uh, Tulsi Gabbard crowd. You excited to see her first time? Oh, yeah, for sure. You got your T-shirt on? Yeah, I got my T-shirt. I, I didn't even know this event was happening when I bought this. So, yeah. Last minute, right? Me too. I found that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally found it yesterday with her. I had to drag her to come here. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, who is this? Um, but I'll come because I really interested in all these things. So, yeah. It's definitely exciting. First woman president. Maybe definitely end some of these insurgency wars, regime change wars. Important. Importante. Very important. Yeah. <laughs> Are you from New York? Uh, yeah, I'm from, uh, I was born in Brooklyn, then uh, I moved to Queens, you know, the full New York experience. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, we go to school in Tennessee, actually, though. Oh, really? I go to Vanderbilt, she goes to Rhodes, so. Cool, man. So enjoy the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mark Sconti reporting. How you doing, Hi, man? Hi, I'm, I'm doing well. All right. Um, go ahead. No, so, uh, you know, just taking the temperature of the line. I'm excited that the line is uh, wrapped around the block for Tulsi Gabbard. We're here in New York City. She's... You know, a um, you know, pretty much an unknown face. Why Tulsi? Why now? Well, I first heard of Tulsi back in 2016 when she stood up for Bernie at the Democratic National mm. Convention, and I felt this woman had morals. She had a moral compass, and then when now she's talking about ending the regime change wars, which I believe is a huge part of our uh, our problems uh, that cause a lot of domestic problems and problems for us reputationally abroad. So I think if she if she was in the presidency, I think she would bring an end to those wars, and I think that would help us a lot for now and the future. So you start with you start with ending the wars. That's about that's about five hundred. Uh, I don't know billion dollars, right? A year, exactly. Trillions of dollars, and then you put it into what, like healthcare? Exactly. Um, you know, health. We don't, have, but we don't have enough money for healthcare. <laughs> Well, we, we can't have, do that. Well, we have enough uh, money for blank checks for Boeing and all these other um, right. companies. So I think I think we can do much better. As Robert Kennedy would say, we can do better to invest in people here uh, instead of investing in killing people abroad. So, that's What about the integrity of the elections? Tulsi's pushing for uh, paper ballots because of the cheating. Do you think, um, do you think the Democrats are going to give anybody a fair shake? Or they're just going to manufacture that consent for Biden and try to shove him down everybody's throat like they did with Hillary? 
Well, I mean, that's what we're seeing now. I mean, the media keeps pushing Biden, saying that he's leading in the polls. But I mean, I, it's because they're not giving enough coverage to candidates and actually honest candidates like Tulsi. Um, so, yes, the DNC is obviously biased towards the establishment candidates that are backed up by the corporations. But are they outright cheating? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say. Did 12, the 12 Russian GRU agents swoop into the DNC right. and hack the, hack the convention, hack the, hack the servers, and then, and then favor Trump by giving, the, by giving the emails to WikiLeaks? Do you believe that story? <laughs> it sounds really far-fetched explained that way. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to say that, you know, I, I don't... I'm or, gonna, was yeah. it, or was it a creation of Hillary Clinton, Robbie Mook, and John Podesta in the back alleys when they got caught cheating? I said, I blame Russia. It's definitely the latter. So, <laughs> I agree with you, sir. Good talk to you, man. Good talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. He's a good guy. That was a good man. Go back to the front of the line. Back to the front of the line where the winners are. Huh. Hey, look at this. In New York, you can get a back rub right on the street. You want, to get, you want a back rub? Yes. Ah, it's a massage parlor right in the street. Ah, you want massage? Okay. Oh, no happy ending. <laughs> oh, after hours, happy ending. If you don't know what a happy ending is, don't don't worry about it. So, uh, so there you have it, man. Taking that temperature, taking the temperature of the line. Tulsi Gabbard. I don't know what else to say? Line is all the way around the block. There it is. All the way around the block. I think so. So when the mainstream media says, ah, nobody showed up, we have proof. Excuse me. We got proof. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Tulsi Gabbard for president. You ever heard of her? No. I thought the, the, the Blasio. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna vote for the Blasio? Yeah, because look at our country; it's homeless. Uh -huh. He's gonna be president. Gonna be country uh, homeless. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you guys a question about Tulsi Gabbard. Hi. You, you live here. You, you know this place. You asking me I'm, for directions? I'm, I'm shooting for, a video. Yeah, 76 East. You're right in front of it, mate. Just huh? get in line. Yeah, you're right in front of it. You here for Tulsi Gabbard? Yeah, yeah. The line is in the go around the block. <laughs> you here for what? Are you lost? What are you not from New York? Yeah, hey, I'm. 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 I'm from uh, uh, the press man, Indian press. Uh huh. Just get in the back of the line, mate. They can open the door. Any minute, man. You're, you're in good hands. Oh, uh, they, they said 10:30, right? 11 o'clock. Oh, wait. Soon. Almost 11, anyway. Let me see your paper. So, ah, Tulsi. Yeah, you're in the right place, man. Just get in line, man. But I'm from the, uh, the press, Indian press, man. Uh, oh, India uh, press. There, yeah. Oh. Is there any? Uh, you still gotta wait in line. I mean, you could try to get in. They'll let you in early if you want. Where? If you say you press, yeah. Where? Or you could just hang out with the real people. No, I'm, I, I just want to enter immediately. Right. Is it okay? Right, good luck, man. I don't work here, man. You're asking the wrong guy. Believe me. I have no authority whatsoever. How you doing, man? So, uh, that guy's from India. Let me get on this yeah, side. Yeah. So, India press. <laughs> Looks a little confused. You should report on it. Get his directions before he starts reporting. Right. So Tulsi Gabbard, here we are. We found it, right? right? This is the old Cat Club. You remember the Cat Club? Are you old, are you from New York? Yeah, yeah, I remember. You remember the Cat Club? Yeah. This was the Cat Club. This was the uh, the rock and roll uh, uh, yeah, no. headquarters yeah. for many years. Yeah, I so think Captain Beefheart was here once or something. <laughs> right, right. A lot of them, Jay, like Gigi Allen. The the I saw the Black Crows here. All right. So Tulsi Gabbard, let's talk about it. Here we are. We're online. Yeah. You don't. Uh, are you a military guy? I'm not. Why Tulsi Gabbard? Teacher. teacher, why Tulsi Gabbard? Why now? Because she's the only real candidate. The, all the other candidates are fake uh, establishment candidates. She's the only one talking about war and peace and uh, reorganizing the banking. We'll get nothing done 
We'll get no infrastructure, no health care. Nothing will happen without ending these permanent wars, Wall Street-driven wars. You know, it's funny you say that because Bernie Sanders has been all about domestic policies forever, and yeah. suddenly, once Tulsi Gabbard entered the well, picture, that was Bernie's weakness. But uh, and now know. he's put T Tulsi is pushing Bernie left on on uh, regime change. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, she's the, she's the real deal. Yeah. And uh, so that's why people were supporting Unflinching, him. very, very personable. Very personable, uh, a lot of experience, and, uh, you know, a lot of courage. So, Does it bother you that there's not a, uh, and, and no, this is no offense, I'm in my 50s, right. but does it does it bother you that there's, there's not a lot of young people on this line? It seems mostly people, you know, people our age. Well, you know, young, uh, we'll see. I don't think the young people... Uh, they're on board with Bernie. They're on board with, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's the Bernie thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's, just, it's a hard. I don't know I, either. I think she, once That's why I'm asking. She's really not. You know, once, if we can break a, a level of, of um, you know, exposure, I think you're going to see. They're they, they're going to see she's the she's the real candidate. Yeah. You know. Good talking, to you, man. Uh, Thank you very much. Great, 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 great. What's to your be name, here. man? Winslow, Chris Thanks. Winslow. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. It's, uh, it's a YouTube channel. What is it? I'm going to put it on. It's in my hat. <laughs> my name. Just YouTube it. YouTube your phone. So the lines move along. It's actually a, a bigger turnout than I... Uh, much bigger turnout than I expected, to be honest with you. So it looks like people are starting to come in. Try to get into the... Uh, so... I'm going to kill it here. Marcus Conti reporting. Maybe I'll get a... Uh, Get a little more with Tulsi. Maybe I can get an interview. I don't know. But, uh, you know, reporting live, it's definitely, she's definitely changing the, um, she's definitely moving and shaking, Tulsi Gabbard. There's no doubt about it. Right? There's no joke. This is a real crowd, real people online that know the issues. Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs>